Hey, Pierce Podcast, Dr. Ray Ingram, and I'm with our senior, uh, Benjamin Trinity. So, sir, what year did you get to RCS? I came here fifth grade, so 2015. 2015, so fifth grade, right? Man, so what do you remember about fifth grade? Um, I remember my teacher, Ms. Thomas, and Mr. J. They were my, my teachers. Um, it was very, it felt normal, kind of, like it didn't seem too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, coming from a previous charter school. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot more, like it was a lot bigger than from my previous. I used to go to CCH. Okay. Like East Hampton, like that. Yeah. I closed down and so I moved to RCS. And, um, That's a fun fact. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was interesting. There were a lot of different, different uh, personalities that led us. Uh, definitely see different um, cultures and different like backgrounds, which was nice to see. And, it was a lot more fun, and I uh, definitely liked how they kind of ran things. It felt more in depth. So. Yeah. All right. So fifth grade. Now talking about your middle school experience. What was that like? It was definitely an experience. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the time when you know everyone's going through different hormones, whatever. Everyone's trying to figure out themselves. Everyone's doing crazy things, or some people not doing anything. <laughs> Um, it was definitely really time. It was definitely a big growth period for me, I think. Um, it was very humbling to see how I kind of like come up from there and um, left that immaturity back there, you know, kind yeah. of an immature time, but I think I handled it pretty well. I was able to foster the friendships to carry on to high school, so. I'm glad that I can continue that and it's my teachers of course. I've been studying the whole time. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. No, you guys got a squad. I, I heard you got a study group and, and like what is what is that like? High school being high school RCS, first class and RCS. What's that like? It's very I guess not like open, but like not what you think. Right, like sometimes I don't even know what it is. Right? <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's definitely something that is constantly changing and growing, and being able to experiment what works best for me and what works best for others and what works best for the school, um, and work towards finding that balance. Yeah, um, definitely a lot of hard work. Um, also, I mean, for me, it didn't seem like too much of hard work. Yeah. Um, even though there was less um, like strict rules, like you know, like any of my post school that have like they've been doing this for years. Yeah. But because it's so new, it's nice that there's change and constant developing because you know I'm sure they have other public high schools are outdated, right? So yeah. Sticking to the same thing doesn't really work. Yeah. And so yeah. So your I think it was your ninth grade year. You guys were in the gym. Uh, ten. Your ten grade year. So your ten grade year. You're in the gym, right? Like, so your whole class is in the gym learning because we didn't have space. What was that experience like for you? I mean, it's conflict it's conflicting because it's like I remember it's like my like, oh, it was so bad. Oh, I couldn't focus. The teachers hated it. But for me, I didn't mind. I mean, I kind of liked it. I liked being open and having space to do activities for fun whenever I could. Um, it was never really too much of a distraction for me. I was able to maintain my grades and stay focused. And yeah, I think it, it, was, it was honestly fun for me, but I know it was really hard for other people. Yeah, but you, do you understand why it was hard for other people? Yeah, definitely. Because there's definitely a lot of distractions, other noises, colliding with other classrooms. Um, I'm sure the teachers hated seeing people like, you know, walking around and wanting to play yeah. because they're in a gym. And, yeah. Know, so the natural inclination of being in the gym is like, man, I'm trying to move. Right, I'm trying to right. do something, not trying to learn, right? And like, I think the reason why I asked you that question is because, man, I couldn't imagine learning like a year in the gym, but even though you guys did a year in the gym and we had promised you a space and we couldn't deliver, you stayed with us, right? Now, was that a hard choice or like, what was? That was, a, that was definitely a hard choice. Um, picking between year and year seven, especially for sports. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I'm glad I stayed through because I feel like I, I would have had less stress <clears throat> staying. Right? Okay. I, like I would have had more stress, and I felt like I would have become a lot more known to different things. Like I feel like if I went to a public school, I, I would probably be more to myself or like um, just like trying to get it done. And then I would definitely dread the graduation day a lot more. Than yeah. I did, but, yeah, but you probably would have been like all state, cross country, and like all these things. So you made some sacrifices in terms of staying with us and being uh, one of the first graduate uh, graduates of, of RCS. What, 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 what is, talk to me about that. Like, what's your thoughts? It's just really deciding what I want to do in my future. Um, the biggest factor that kept me was um, friends and teachers. Because if I had left, I would have had two years to get to know my other teachers, so recommendations would have definitely dropped the quality a lot. And sports, I love sports so much, I definitely think I, could, I definitely could have been like a top dog, right? But it's not a reality for where I want to go in the future. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, it would just be kind of fun, right? Cause like, I'm not going to remember it in my years to come, like, oh yeah, I did that in high school once, but where did we be, you know? Yeah. And so if I'm given the opportunity in college, then I'm able to make that on my own and it's, it, won't, it won't affect me too much mm -hmm. um, because it's just not ultimately the most important thing in my life. Yeah, I love that, man. And I love hearing you say that. So, Max, so you make an, ex uh, an excellent point, right? And this is a segue to like what you want to do in the future, right? And so you got some big dreams, right? And so you've always been a, a big dreamer. And so, talk to me about this college that you got accepted into, that's your dream school. Right, yeah, my dream school, BYU, so, um, I mean, it wasn't... So, for the folks that don't know, BYU, Brigham Young University, yes. R1 University in Utah, correct? Yes. Okay. D1 school. D1, baby, D1, right. yes. Yeah, it's a, a college that is uh, co, like, works with and found uh, um, in tune with like my church mm -hmm. and my beliefs, and they have a location in Utah, in Hawaii, Idaho, and Jerusalem. Um, so it's very big, very nice, and it's um, a place of comfort, especially with my church and my religion. Um, so it's kind of like home, right? Yeah. So you you got accepted to come home, basically. Yes. I love that for you. Uh, I remember, uh, and I'm dating myself now. But um, Sean Bradley, who was like a seven-six center uh, that played for Utah and ended up going to the league, where he had uh, he had to do his uh, his two years of mission prior to going to the NFL. I mean, I'm sorry, the NBA. My bad, not the NFL. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about 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 mission and being mission aligned. Like, what does that mean for you? So for me, I plan on going on my mission. Uh, there's different kinds of missions. There's cross lighting, which is where you go out and full time and preach wherever you are. And there's also service missions, which is the same thing. It's just you typically get the same local areas and you know sleeping your own. But they both accomplish the same things. Um, the mission for men it's a two year period, and for sure it's uh, eighteen months. Um, of course, you can leave if you have, if there's anything any problems you need to, or you can extend it a little bit after that for like six weeks. But basically, it's an opportunity to grow yourself and also um, the church and help bring people together. And it's not just preaching the gospel, but it's also providing service, mm -hmm. helping those that um, are going through a tough time or you know, something as simple as like going online, right? Or paving a driveway, you know, for people that need help with that and just being able to be that as disciples of Christ and um, just help make the world a better place. Yeah, I love that, man. You, at this age, trying to make the world a better place, man. I've been trying for over 20 years to make the world a better place, and I'm sure you will do a lot better than me. I hang out with some school. <laughs> so, um, talk to me about your SATs, man. <laughs> so you had, you had the school for now to be able to get into some of the schools that you got into, and so, what was what do you feel like was like the best preparation for you in terms of preparing for SAT? To be honest, 
Um, I read right up. I definitely am super lucky that I got in the time I came in Good. with having SAT optional. Yes. Because with COVID, it was all screwed up and I feel like I wasn't able to prepare for the SAT. Mm -hmm. So, and it is a little my fault for not really studying for it. And I didn't do too great. I didn't do what I wanted to do, how, how well I wanted to. Uh -huh. uh, you, did, you still did pretty good though. It was okay. <laughs> 12, like, okay, so I got 12, uh, 1270. That's pretty amazing. Right. But some of the competition, like even like BYU, the average is 1350. Okay, you're not that far off. Right, but it's still <laughs> it's kind of like a humbling, like, okay, you know. But I definitely think if I devoted myself, I could have been a lot better. Of course. But I'm just so grateful that COVID, obviously, it like, messed up a lot of things, but it also helped that the schools were allowing to be more forgiving for that. Yeah. So I asked that question because, you know, with affirmative action um, being uh, dismissed or whatever, right? And then with uh, some colleges, uh, taking away uh, SAT, making an SAT optional. You got some schools that are bringing it back. So like, for example, Dartmouth College uh, is bringing back the SAT um, for whatever reason. Uh, I think it's the only Ivy of date that's doing that. What are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think that that's fair? Or? Um, I think for now, that seems pretty fair. I think anyone who's able to commit to it can do it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's something that would start like later than earlier, right? Yeah. Like, there's definitely more time to prepare because I'm sure a lot of freshmen have no experience in like even PSATs yet or whatever. But since we're kind of getting back to normal, it makes a little bit of sense. But um, I personally don't think SATs or SATs are a good example of a student. Why? Why? There's a big difference between someone who's able to take a test and someone who's able to read and, um, retain information and someone who's able to be creative and mm -hmm. um, I guess as soon as anyone who's willing to learn yeah. and someone who is able to um, try their best. And sometimes tests kind of get in the way of that, right? And if we focus too much on teaching kids on how to take a test, then they're not gonna really know how to use any education in the real world and why yeah. things are important. And that's why it's so important to be more hands-on and creative and open-minded with the world and stuff. Instead of just, oh, this is A, this is B, this is C, right? Um, SATs, I think, they focus too much on just like, I don't know, it's just too much. Like, I'm, I'm an all right test taker. Yeah. Right? I don't mind it, but the SATs, man, like, I just feel like that is not going to reflect who I yeah. am, right? Yeah. So, you know, I don't think they reflect um, the potential of a true student. That's pretty profound, man. Like, if I was making a commercial and, like, I cut that clip right there, Man, I think everybody in the world would not take an SAT. So SAT, y'all better look out because uh, I don't think people will be taking that test if, if you really understood the impact from a child's perspective, um, how much impact that has on you. So thanks for sharing that. So there's a lot of schools that you turned down, man, that you about to turn down. You got to be a dream school, bro. Yeah. And so what do, what do they have to look out for in terms of uh, being Benjamin Tran incoming freshman? Well, I'm definitely going to go hard in social ed, right? Being able to uh, network around and they're known for one of the best business schools. And so I'm really looking forward to, you know, expanding in that, like, expanding myself in that kind of environment and um, preparing for the world to succeed as best as I can. Yeah, so like, what's the ultimate goal though? So you're going, you're, you're, you're enrolling a, a biz, as a business major, mm -hmm. right? So like, what's, what's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to be able to support my goals, my family, and whatever fun I can do. I want to do it. You know, I'm not, I don't like. I see the value in security and like, you know, corporate or whatever. But I also see. I don't. I'm not going to turn my life into. Um, like, what's the word? work for them or live to work, right? So I think I definitely want to find find a balance in between that, right? Yeah. Because it's not all about the money. Yeah. But it's sad that I put, you need money to do certain things and to be able to um, grow in other aspects of life and stay uh, secure. Yeah, that's pretty profound coming from a, a young gent like yourself, man. I appreciate that. So I learned a lot about you today. I never knew that you went to that school. 
um, uh, prior to coming to RCS. So that, that is amazing. Um, I said that it got it got shut down, um, but I'm glad you came here. I'm glad you found us. Yes. Right, and we found you. Right. Uh, anything else you want the people to know about vending training in the senior class at RCS? Um, everything is not how it seems. You know, I mean, I think there's also a lot of backlash with like people in general with like politics and stuff. And people always talk about like his past history. I think um, as important, history is super important. And it's important to learn about it and to be educated and not to be ignorant about it, right? But it's also important to use that so that you can grow from it and learn from it and change and fix, right? Um, and I think that there's been good progress and that there's no point in maintaining a still perspective on the past. Like, we don't, we don't judge other Americans for living in a country whose first president owned slaves or whatever, right? It's the same way. It's, there are also just tons of... Uh, Who doesn't judge them? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, like, I don't look at an American and I'm like, oh, you would, or like, if, or someone in, like, uh, Italy, mm -hmm. if someone's Italian that lives in Italy, I'm like, oh, you're 10,000 years ago, you had a king that did all these terrible things, how could you live in Italy? Well, things change. Mm -hmm. Things are evolving, right? And I think it's important to stay open minded and, um, you know, assume the best. Yeah. Assume the best. Best intent. Right? Yes. Assume yes. the best, expect the logical, yeah. and prepare for that work for the worst. Yeah. 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 You sure you don't want to be a teacher? I mean, I'm not about it, but I think there's um, bigger things in life for me. I think that's a big question, like whether or not my potential is being used to the fullest at capability. It's not something that I'm constantly um, debating about, you know. Because I can see myself in any field, thriving in, you know. Researching cancer, or being yeah. a doctor, or teaching the next generation, or building houses, or whatever it is, you know. There's, yeah. always, there's always that dilemma of whether or not you're doing the best thing for the world, but also the best thing for yourself. Yeah. So, what was what, your current cumulative uh, grade point average? Uh, 4.0. 4.0, right? And you're on your way to BYU Provost. Yes. That is amazing, man. Thank you for taking time uh, out of your busy schedule because I had to kind of reschedule with you three times <laughs> in, order to, in order to get you here, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Hi. All right. All right. <laughs> that was nice. See? How do you,